Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in the Going to the Shot series. Today we are going to be taking a look at making player control, so that's going to be really awesome. And you might notice that in the 2D assets pack available on Brackies.com, we have a 2D character controller now, which is great for 2D platform games. And this was originally made by Mike DeSero, so thanks to him. Now let's get started with today's video. So as always, I've opened up Unity. And if we first off go ahead and focus on the player. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a box collider. So go to Add Component. And you can see there's a new tab called Physics 2D. Let's select this and hit the box collider. Now we can go ahead and adjust the size. It didn't do this automatically because I've added this shadowing effect, so it thinks that the image starts out here. So we are just gonna shrink this down a bit. First off, the size on the x-axis is going to be 0 0.24, and the size on the y-axis is going to be 2. Point, I believe it's 6, 8, nope, 8, 6. There we have it. And that looks really precise. And you can of course zoom in and edit it further. Now, now we can just go ahead and add the script. So let's hit add component, new script, and let's call this player controls. And we're going to make it a type JavaScript. Throughout this uh, short series, we're going to be using JavaScript because I find it easiest for complete beginners to learn. And this is mostly for beginners to intermediate users. But you can, of course, go ahead and convert it to c -sharp and it will work just fine. Let's hit create an ad and double click it to open it up in Mono Develop 4. The new Mono Develop looks way cleaner and has a much, yeah, a much more clean interface. Let's first off delete the function start because we're not going to need it. Now we can go ahead and declare some variables. So let's type var move up. What we're going to do is we're going to store what keys we want to press in order for our players to move up and down as variables. A lot of people don't know that you can do this, but it's really handy because we need two players, each with their set of controls. And we don't want to manage input controls or create several scripts for that. Instead, we can just store it as a variable. So we're going to do type key code. And then make another variable called move down, which is also going to be of type key code. At last, we're going to create a third variable called speed. And let's do a type float. And we're just going to set that equal to 10 by default. Now in the function update, let's create the if statements that are going to check for input. So if input dot get key. And then we're going to open up a parenthesis and type move up. So if we press the move up key, something's going to happen. Then let's do else if input dot get key. And this time we're going to type move down. So if we press the down key, something, something else is going to happen. And at last, um, we want an, an else statement. And the reason for this is that we are not going to be adding force to our player. Instead, we are going to access the velocity directly. This will allow us to get the really tight and snappy controls, which, is, which are usually in old school arcade games, and not those floaty, annoying kinds of controls. But it also means that once we have set the velocity, it will stay the same, because it's not affected by gravity or any other forces. So basically, once we press a key, the player will just keep on moving. And we want him to stop whenever we uh, don't press anything. So we are going to do else. And in here, we can set the velocity to be zero. But before we can change the velocity at all, we need to add a rigid body. So let's head back into Unity and see that the variables now appear. Let's select the move up 
and change it to W because this is the player on the left and I want that to be W there and they move down to S. The speed, we're just going to leave that at 10. Now we can go ahead and hit Add Component, Physics 2D, and then Rigid Body 2D. You can see that a lot of these settings are just like the old Rigid Body component. We're going to start off by changing the gravity scale to zero because we don't want the player to fall to the ground. Also, we're going to check Fixed Angle, which is a really new, awesome feature uh, making our object stationary on the rotation, meaning that it won't just rotate when we play the game. Now we can go ahead and open up the script again. And Unity has made the naming of their new functions really easy to remember. Basically, once you want to do something 2D specific, like accessing a 2D rigid body, all we have to do is type what we used to type and then put 2D after. So if we want to access the rigid body, we are just going to do rigid body and then put 2D after. Then we're going to do dot velocity and then we're going to do the y axis because that's the up and down. And we're going to set that to speed. We're going to do the same in the next one. Rigid body 2D dot velocity dot y equals speed. But we want to reverse the direction, we want this to go downwards. So what we can do is we can say speed times minus one. So by multiplying with minus one, we reverse the variable speed, thus our object will move downwards. In the else statement here, we're gonna type rigid body 2D dot velocity dot y, and then just equal it to zero. This way our object won't move. Now we can go in and play with our controls, so hit play, and now we can move up and down. So this is working just how we want it. You can easily duplicate the, uh, the player and change the move up and down, and now we have two players. You will also notice that we can move off screen. This is something we are going to change in an upcoming video, where I'm going to show you a cool script I made where it will automatically adjust colliders or boundary boxes as they are also known to fit the screen size. So that's going to be really awesome. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.